I know that some of you just now clicked on this video and you've never seen one of my videos before, and you're getting ready to dispute the title without even hearing me out. So, please, hear me out for just a minute. After the release of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Midway decided the next big mainline title in the Mortal Kombat series would be a crossover with the DC Universe. While yes, it made sense for them to do it at the time, since the previous timeline was wrapped up with Armageddon, players at this time did not want a crossover that was rated T with extremely limited gore, much, much less content than the previous game, little evolution from the previous game, and a story that could be completely removed from any Mortal Kombat timeline and the series would stay exactly the same. We have to remember that this was supposed to be another next-gen leap for the Mortal Kombat series, and the difference between Mortal Kombat 4 and Deadly Alliance was astounding, but here, it's not even close to that same kind of leap. If I'm completely honest, I've never been the biggest superhero video game or series or anything enjoyer, whether that's Marvel or DC, and I'm sure there's other Mortal Kombat players out there that feel the same way. I'm not saying all of this to say the game is bad, because it's really not, I actually think it's pretty decent. What I'm saying is that I don't think it's a game that should even exist in the Mortal Kombat series. It came out at a weird time, and honestly, I feel that most players who want to go through the entire series, such as myself, would rather just go from Armageddon to Mortal Kombat 9, as that makes much more sense in context of the story. Like I said, the game isn't bad, I think the gameplay can be very fun at times, but we need to consider its place in Mortal Kombat history. Mortal Kombat gained such a cult following in the first place in part because of the gore. It created a cultural shift in the gaming industry. There were politicians trying to get the game pulled. It completely changed the trajectory of games forever. Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe completely throws out a very large part of Mortal Kombat's DNA. The gore is essentially non-existent. The fatalities are no more gory or even fatal than a lot of the regular moves are. Anyways, now that I have that long-ass intro out of the way, I'm going to tell you how I'm structuring this video. How I'm playing. I'm going to start off by doing the first half of the story, the Mortal Kombat side. After each chapter, I'm going to play as the character that was played as in that chapter in the arcade mode. Then, once I finish the Mortal Kombat side, I'm going to play the characters that didn't get their own chapter in arcade mode. Afterwards, I'll do the same thing for the DC side. Once I've completed all the content in the game that I'd like to see, I'll give overall thoughts and opinions about the game as a whole. Let's get going. Mortal Kombat side. Chapter 1. Liu Kang. It starts off with Raiden being mad at Shao Kahn for betraying the rules of Mortal Kombat, then Quan Chi has to meet judgment from the Elder Gods. It cuts to Liu Kang and Katana, who talk about how both of their forces have started to disappear, and they need to figure out who's causing this little issue. Liu Kang goes to find Sub-Zero, who is pissed for no reason, and wants to fight Liu Kang. After fighting Sub-Zero, Sub-Zero is concerned because the Ling Kuei are also disappearing. Scorpion shows up and is pissed that Liu Kang let Sub-Zero walk away, so you fight. Scorpion goes sicko mode and Liu Kang goes to kick him, but somehow the Flash shows up instead. Liu Kang's dumbass thinks it's Shang Tsung, so they fight. The Flash is on the ground looking dead as fuck, then Liu Kang takes him somewhere to heal him or some shit, and Shang Tsung shows up to kill him. After defeating him, Liu Kang hits up Sonya, asking if she's talked to Kano, and now Liu Kang is realizing that something a little peculiar is going on so he tries to attune to the Flash's energy. Liu Kang Liu Kang is a Shaolin monk who has defeated Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn previously. He goes to Wuxi Academy for more martial arts training, then shit hits the fan. I've never been super crazy about Liu Kang, especially not design-wise, but in this game, something about his face just doesn't look right. It doesn't look like Liu Kang to me. His moves are low and high dragon fire, flying dragon kick, dragon's tail, and bicycle kick, so he doesn't get anything new, but since it is a new engine, it does feel different enough. He's a decent character, but nothing much else to add on to that. I did his head stomp fatality, but it didn't seem like a fatality, it was more like a normal special move. Obviously the game is rated T, so they couldn't really do any good fatalities, unfortunately. I also did the Mortal Kombat 1 arcade sweep, which was pretty funny. I actually got all the way to the end of the arcade ladder, but Dark Khan absolutely wiped my ass with sandpaper, so I wasn't able to win. Through intense study, Raiden was able to unlock the secrets of the Rock of Eternity and determine its function. He decided to emulate it and create a Captain Marvel of Earthrealm. Raiden infused Liu Kang with his own power as well as the abilities of his fellow gods Argus, Fujin, and others. In order to transform himself into a being of unstoppable power, Liu Kang need only shout Mortal Kombat. Chapter 2, Sonya. Sonya is concerned that there's something wrong with Liu Kang and that he needs help. He hits up Katana, who says she needs to use all of her attention against something in Outworld. Catwoman pulls up on Sonya, walking all slow, and says she needs to get back to Gotham City, but right now she has a headache. When Sonya locks down the area, Catwoman says you can't cage this kitty, and you fight. After beating Catwoman, Sonya goes to where Liu Kang was and can't find him. She calls Jax to tell him about what's going on, and Baraka shows up and wants to fight. Sonya doesn't know why Baraka is here, so she needs to tell Raiden about it. While she's calling for Raiden, Captain Marvel shows up puzzled as fuck as to why he's there, and he's pissed. You fight, and then Green Lantern shows up and mentions the rage. 
Green Lantern doesn't know what's going on, so you fight him. Sonya grabs Green Lantern by the neck, and before they could really start the foreplay, Captain Marvel cockblocks and Green Lantern takes him away to get his nut off. Sonya. She was a normal Special Forces agent until she stumbled across the Mortal Kombat tournament while chasing Kano. She convinced Jax to create a division of the Special Forces dedicated to protecting Earthrealm. Design-wise, Sonya looks kinda lame. Nothing that makes her stand out, really, other than that if she's truly a powerful Special Forces operative, maybe she could wear more protective clothing. Her moves are Ring of Doom, which is a projectile, Deadly Kiss, which stuns her opponent because her breath smells like shit, Leg Grab, which just flips the opponent, Bicycle Kick, but don't let that fool you, it isn't the same as Liu Kang's, it's actually way worse, you have to be way closer and it sends them into the air. There's Air Bicycle Kick, which is the same but in the air, Cartwheel Flip, which just launches your opponent into the air, and Square Wave, which is just an air kick, basically. I mean, her moves are kind of unique, but also they just feel kind of lame. She doesn't suck, but she also isn't anything special. Also, what the fuck? As she gets damaged, her goddamn sports bra that she's wearing starts to tear, damn near fully exposing her boobs. Her posture is all fucked up in her idle position. She needs a chiropractor. I lost pretty early, and it was to Katana, who did an inflation kink fatality. During the World Merge Crisis, a member of the Green Lantern Corps was killed. At the moment of his death, his power ring traveled to Sonya, taking her as its new master. When the worlds were once again separated, the ring stayed with her. Now she has the ultimate weapon, but only one charge. She must use the ring sparingly until she can find a way to replenish its power. Chapter 3, Jax. Jax walks up on Sonya, confused as to what's going on, and for whatever reason, Sonya sees Jax and Kano, and they fight. After fighting, Raiden shows up asking why the hell Jax and Sonya were fighting, and Jax says Sonya was just pissed, and she explains she had some kind of rage take her over, and they head to the base to try to figure out what's going on. Jax tries to get the portal to work properly, and then Lex Luthor just shows up behind him. Lex says he's here to look at the portal, and says he wants to do business with Jax. Jax would rather beat his ass. After Jax wins, Sonya comes and asks what the hell is going on. They decide to go check out that space station that I guess Lex came from. They end up showing up at different spots on the station. Jax comes up and slaps a guard guy and Captain Marvel fights Jax. Jax calls Sonya and they need to find a control station. Then Wonder Woman shows up and Jax tries to shoot her, but Wonder Woman deflects all the bullets. She's with Sub-Zero when Sub-Zero says Jax is a formidable warrior. She makes fun of him and says true warriors don't use guns. I defeat the overconfident broad without using guns because funnily enough the game disables the gun move. Sub-Zero offers help and Jax trusts him. Sub-Zero thinks that Shao Kahn returned with a new army. He needs to talk to a sorcerer that might have answers. Jax. He was a good warrior, but found he'd be even better with metal arms. He created the Special Forces Outer World Investigation Agency with Sonya. I really enjoy Jax a lot in this game. His design just looks super badass, like he's the strongest motherfucker of all time. His moves are really enjoyable, too. He has Gun Runner, which just shoots your opponent from afar with a machine gun, Power Fist, which is a hard punch, Blinding Light, which stuns your opponent, Rocket Blast, which just fires a rocket, Gotcha Grab, which he's had forever, and a Ground Pound, which he also has had forever. Despite the moves being a lot of fun, none of them stand out as being particularly unique. Many of them are moves he retained from previous games, but since it is a new engine and all, there's nothing super wrong with that. I lost to Raiden on Fight 7. Badly injured in the melee with the otherworldly invaders, Jax knew he must enhance his cybernetics to save his own life. He underwent massive anatomical restructuring, replacing most of his body with mechanized, fully armored versions. Jax is now more powerful than ever, but at the cost of his humanity. Sub-Zero gets jump-scared by Raiden, who tells him he isn't welcomed. Sub-Zero says he needs help, and Raiden fights him because he is Lin Kuei. Raiden is surprised he was defeated and is very untrusting of Sub-Zero, but Sub-Zero just wants to protect Earthrealm. They go to the rock formation across the way, and Raiden says Earthrealm is merging with another world, and that Quan Chi knew it was happening. Raiden tells Sub-Zero to find Scorpion in order to find Quan Chi. Sub-Zero shows up in Gotham City where Deathstroke says hello. Deathstroke says Sub-Zero is in enemy territory, so they fight. After defeating Deathstroke, he lays on the ground looking dead as fuck, and Sub-Zero continues to track Scorpion, leading him to the Batcave. Batman says what's good, and Sub-Zero freezes his arm. Batman, infected by rage, fights Sub-Zero. Once Sub-Zero wins, Scorpion opens a portal and drags Sub-Zero into it, where Sub-Zero meets Quan Chi who's enjoying some kinky shit. Quan Chi tells Scorpion to kill Sub-Zero. Once the fight is over, Quan Chi gets lucky from the power of the universe emerging and releases himself from his shackles. He does a maniacal laugh and then explains that no one will survive. And tells Sub-Zero to leave. Quan Chi tells Scorpion to find the princess. Sub-Zero. 
He's an assassin for the Lin Kuei. He has the power of ice and cold. He became Sub-Zero when his brother of the same name was killed by Scorpion, and he questions the Lin Kuei. Sub-Zero has quite the standard design in this game, so not much to talk about. His moves also remain quite standard. He has his normal freeze orb move, his slide, but gains Ice Nugget, which just drops a big fucking block of ice on your opponent, Ice Counter, which is just a normal counter move, and Tombstone Teleport, where he just teleports to the other side of the opponent. Despite his moves not being anything insanely special, he's a very light character and he plays very snappy and it's fun. I feel like this is a good time to talk about the lack of alternate skins. Look at this footage and imagine the health bars aren't there. Can you tell who is who? The answer is no, because there's no discernible way you could. Anyways, I made it all the way to Dark Con, and unfortunately, I lost despite being so close to winning. Fighting alongside the forces of light during the world merge crisis, Sub-Zero came to a realization. He was no longer the assassin he had been, nor was he comfortable among the self-proclaimed defenders of Earthrealm. Inspired by one of the invaders, Sub-Zero decided he would work for the good of the realm, but on his own terms. He would be a mostly solitary figure, blending in with the dark and the cold. Sub-Zero left the Lin Kuei and donned a new costume befitting this new endeavor. But the Lin Kuei do not tolerate desertion, as he will soon discover. Chapter 5, Scorpion. Scorpion shows up in Gotham City, where immediately the Joker shows up and fucking does a little goofy toy punch on Scorpion, which Scorpion doesn't find very funny. Lex Luthor shows up trying to recruit Joker to help, and Joker says yes. It then cuts to Wonder Woman talking to some random soldier or something, and Scorpion shows up to find the princess, and Wonder Woman tells Scorpion to not look around the island, and Scorpion chooses to fight her. Wonder Woman looks dead as fuck, and Scorpion goes back to Gotham City, where Superman asks if Scorpion needs help. Superman knows that Scorpion isn't from this universe, and he's just trying to help, but Scorpion doesn't want to help. Superman walks over to Scorpion with confidence, and Scorpion sends him to oblivion. Katana walks up and fights Scorpion. Katana and Quan Chi, along with Baraka and Shang Tsung, come and Quan Chi takes over Katana's mind. He says for Shang Tsung to hunt someone down. It cuts to Sub-Zero talking to Liu Kang and Raiden, then Quan Chi shows up telling him that everyone is vulnerable, and shows that Katana is infected with rage and it'll only get worse. Quan Chi gets Raiden to trust him, and Katana realizes it's Dark Khan that's causing this to happen. They need to use all of their forces together to defeat everyone that's with Dark Khan, meaning Liu Kang has to fight with Shang Tsung. It's a pretty cliché plot device. Oh no! There's a bad guy that threatens all of us. We hate each other, but we can only win if we work together. Scorpion. He was part of the Shirai Ryu ninja clan, and then he was killed by Sub-Zero. Quan Chi resurrected him and killed Sub-Zero, but Sub-Zero's little brother wants to kill him, so Scorpion wants to kill him too. Scorpion's design is also pretty standard, but it's good looking, I like it. He has his spear move, his punch teleport move, a slide move, a move where he shits himself and sets himself on fire, and then a move where he sets his opponent on fire from afar. I mean, it's standard Scorpion gameplay, but he's pretty fun and also pretty default. He's one of those fighters that realistically changes very little between the games, but it's okay because it gives familiarity to the character. I made it all the way to Dark Khan and got slaughtered. Though Dark Khan was defeated, his consciousness lived on. The Dark Lord's power and maliciousness found the perfect host in the body of the wrathful Scorpion. In the midst of his agony, Scorpion knew that he would soon be the most powerful creature in the universe, if he survived the transformation. Chapter 6, Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung and Liu Kang get to the fortress, and Superman and Green Lantern show up and they want to fight. Superman looks dead as hell, but he wasn't, and Green Lantern caught Liu Kang off screen. Shang Tsung says that at least they were more powerful than Liu Kang's adversaries, and since Liu Kang has a very fragile ego, attributed assumably by his very tiny penis, he opts to fight Shang Tsung. Liu Kang is surprised that Shang Tsung won, but because of the merging, Shang Tsung got more powerful. He almost kills Liu Kang, but Green Lantern feels like doing the job, and Shang Tsung doesn't like that, so he fights him. Green Lantern looks dead as fuck, and Liu Kang is surprised that Shang Tsung defended him. They go to return to the others. They are all talking about Joker, and Shang Tsung is surprised they were defeated by a clown. Kano got his ego hurt real bad, so he fights Shang Tsung. Sonya stops Shang Tsung from going harder on Kano. Jax calls her up saying he has bad news and says that the DC people took a portal to Outworld. Katana summons a portal and everyone heads out to Outworld. Shang Tsung. He is a sorcerer who consumes souls. He was host of the Mortal Kombat tournament to support Shao Kahn. Liu Kang defeated him, so now he wants to kill Liu Kang real bad. Honestly, this is probably my favorite Shang Tsung design at this point in the series. In the first Mortal Kombat, he was too old. In Mortal Kombat 2, he was too young. Deadly Alliance, he was super red and just looked a little silly. And here he is, a little older but not super old, and just all around not someone to mess with. His moves are actually really good too. 
He has the flaming skull, as always, a move where he shoots flames into the sky, a slide launch, which is actually pretty cool looking, body switch, which just switches your position with the enemy, soul steal, which he's had for a while, and hot escape, which is your average teleport move. He plays really good, honestly, and I had a good amount of fun playing as him. I lost to Dark Khan again. Impressed with Captain Marvel's fighting ability, but angered by his defeat at the hero's hands, Shang Tsung sought to create a race of super warriors. They would have Captain Marvel's abilities, but would be a perversion of the hero's image. Through sorcery, he combined blood from a torn piece of Captain Marvel's cape with the flesh of a Tarkatan corpse. Never before had his flesh pits echoed with the roar of such a monstrosity. With an army of super Tarkatans, Shang Tsung will be invincible. Chapter 7, Raiden. Everyone goes to a big platform and fights, but once it's over, just Raiden and Shang Tsung are standing, and they see that Dark Khan went to a different space island. Then, Raiden decides that Shang Tsung led him into a trap and decides to fight. Raiden walks up to Shang Tsung, about to kill him, but Liu Kang stops him from doing that, and they fight. Raiden walks up, almost killing Liu Kang. Then he comes to his senses and realizes he just fucked up Liu Kang for no reason. Shang Tsung tells him they need to fight Dark Khan. Raiden decided to do it alone. Superman happened to come at the same time, so they fight. They both stand there, tired from fighting, and Dark Kong congratulates them. He stops Superman from stopping him, then he stops Raiden. They both realize neither of them are fighting for Dark Kong. They try not to give in to the rage so they can fight Dark Kong. Then it's time to fight Dark Kong. After I win, Dark Kong straight up just fucking explodes. Superman and all the other people disappear from the Mortal Kombat universe, but Darkseid stands there remaining. Raiden comes down and decides that it would be a good idea to send his ass to the Nether Realm. And now that I beat the story, I got Shao Kahn. I can also say that I'm now halfway through the story because I still have the DC Universe side of it. Raiden. Raiden is the god of thunder and the protector of Earthrealm. He is ageless. Shao Kahn is his brother, apparently, which I never fucking knew until reading this bio. Like, what? He's his brother? How have I gone this far in the series and I never knew that? Raiden's design is pretty simple. Nothing particularly special. It's what you'd expect from Raiden. His moves are also pretty consistent. He has his teleport, a vicinity lightning blast, his regular ranged lightning shot, Lightning Shock, which is like his grab from the 3D era, and his flying grab move, but this time it's called the Superman. Honestly, he plays as he always has, which is a little unfortunate, just because he's probably one of the most samey feeling characters in the game, and I'm starting to get fatigued from playing the same way for so long. A lot of the other characters feel a little more different and fun than Raiden. I got to fight 7, which isn't super far, but really overall, I'd say Raiden is a below average pick in this game. As the interdimensional conflict ended, Raiden returned to Earthrealm, only to discover that exposure to his homeworld's sun weakened him greatly. The sorcerer Quan Chi offered Raiden a jade-colored stone that would replenish his power in return for his sworn allegiance. Where Quan Chi acquired this stone is a mystery. Raiden must now decide between servitude to an evil sorcerer or mortality. Kitana. She's the princess of Adenia and wants to sub Shao Kahn from oppressing her world. She fights with Earthrealm so they don't meet the same fate. Katana's design is obnoxiously default, like she looks exactly like Katana with absolutely no creative liberties. Not that it's a problem exactly, but it's just very, very normal. Her moves are Rolling Fury, where she puts herself in a ball and knocks over your opponent like a fucking bowling pin, Bladed Fans, which is a normal projectile move, Square Wave Assault, which she shares with Sonya, Fan Lift, which she's always had, Razor's Tip, which is like a long uppercut move, and a Teleport. Really, all of her moves are pretty much exactly what you'd expect from her, but they're good enough, I guess. Really, all around just mid. With no base of operations after their devastating losses in Outworld, Katana sought asylum in Earthrealm for her surviving Edenian resistance fighters. Raiden granted them Shang Tsung's abandoned island, where they would remain hidden from mortal eyes. Katana and her warriors remade the former site of the Mortal Kombat tournament into a bastion of beauty and light. To honor the god of Edenia, they renamed their new home Argus Island. Kano. Kano was a killer for hire and a member of the Black Dragon Clan. He went against Earthrealm for personal gain. Sonya is always trying to catch him. One day, he will kill Sonya. Kano needs to get a fresh cut, man. He doesn't look horrible, but Kano with hair just isn't right to me. At least he has the beard with it, so it doesn't look terrible, because imagine if it was just shaved face with the hair. Either way, he just doesn't look right. 
He still has Kano Ball, because of course he does. He has an uppercut Kano Ball, a move called Brutal Throw, where he just grabs the enemy and throws him, knife toss, eye laser, and a parry move that stuns the opponent. Even though I don't like his design, his gameplay is really fucking fun. He's so quick and feels weighty and just so enjoyable to play as. I got all the way to Dark Side, but sweet mother of god, he filled me up with his fluid and slapped my ass for the road. Though the combat rage completely disappeared once Dark Khan was defeated, it drove Kano irreversibly mad. Turning on friend and foe alike, he became an outcast. Kano's appearance changed as well. He has painted his face to further express his seething anger. Alone in the depths of insanity, Kano endlessly repeats, Death to Shang Tsung. Death to Shang Tsung. Death to Shang Tsung. Baraka. Baraka is a Tarkatan. He serves for Shao Kahn. He's killed many of Shao Kahn's opponents. He's sexy. When Shao Kahn was defeated by the forces of light, Baraka works to avenge him. My sweet, handsome, lovable, sexy, perfectly beautiful husband. His design is perfect as it always has been. He has his spark projectile where he channels his beauty and shoots a concentrated ball of happiness. He has his standing love blades where he playfully tickles his opponent and moves them away before they tickle him back. He has Scrape Kick, where he uses his Wonder Energy to propel himself and feed into his opponent's foot fetish. And his last move is Blade Cyclone, where he puts all of his magical energy into his blades and they spin around like the pretty little ballerina he is. His gameplay in this game is so perfect and amazing. If I could only play as him in this game, I would be very pleased, nay, honored, to get the opportunity to be allowed to experience his wisdom and charisma. He also has this move where he puts his blade away and instead uses his Love Fist to pleasure his opponent. Just a perfectly lovable and perfect guy, as always. As the worlds returned to normal, the combat rage dissipated in its victims, except the Tarkatans. Through the rage, the savage outworld race has descended to an even greater level of bloodlust. Marking their foreheads with the blood of their enemies, they now storm throughout the realms, dominating all. DC story mode. It opens up to Metropolis, where Darkseid is being defeated by Superman, but unfortunately he isn't quite defeated. Superman walks up on Lex Luthor and Superman isn't pleased with how Lex aligned himself on the wrong side. Lex says it was just to ensure humanity's survival. Darkseid gets pulled into a weird-ass portal. Superman hauls Lex off to jail. Chapter 1, The Flash. This chapter starts off with some random guy walking down the street who meets Deathstroke saying he has the money and Deathstroke fucking kills the guy saying he needed to pay up sooner. The Flash starts getting really fast all around Deathstroke and knocks him to the ground, saying he was going to take him to jail, but Deathstroke would rather fight than be hauled off to jail. Deathstroke lays there, looking dead as fuck, and the Flash calls up Wonder Woman. The Flash gets infected with rage and goes to Gotham City at the request of Wonder Woman. Deathstroke gets up weak as hell. It cuts to Catwoman seeing the bat signal, and Catwoman says what Batman doesn't know won't hurt him, Then the Flash pulls up on Catwoman, questioning why she's a hero and a criminal. Catwoman drops whatever the valuable thing is, Kano comes in and grabs it, and the Flash is pissed. Then, Catwoman gets sucked into a portal. The Flash and Kano fight. The Flash grabs Kano, pissed as hell, then Batman comes in asking what the hell is going on. Batman says the Flash is certainly tripping. The Flash says he is of sound mind, and then fights Batman. The Flash walks up to Batman, and Batman stuns the Flash. The Flash. Barry Allen was a shitty chemist and accidentally gave himself super speed. He can go extremely fast and even go to other realities. Yeah, sure, the Flash has an iconic design that has lasted for a long time, but come on, he looks like such a fucking nerd. Look at his little stupid lightning bolts on his head. I'm not saying his design is bad, I'm just saying he looks goofy in a Mortal Kombat game. He has a teleport move called Fast Escape, Teleport Uppercut, Flurry Punch, Around the World, and Teleport Flurry. All of the moves kind of blend together, and while they play into the ability of being super fast, you're not getting anything with him that you can't get somewhere else, in my opinion. Not just that, but strangely enough, at least whenever I was playing, he just didn't feel all that fast, which is kind of his whole gimmick. Some of his combos are quick, which is fun, but it feels like something's missing. I don't know, I just don't really like him all that much. As a result of Liu Kang's aura attunement, the Flash discovered he had retained a psychic bond with the warrior. The two agreed to warn each other of any cross-universal breaches. It wasn't long until Liu Kang appeared before the Flash, warning him of an impending attack by the sorcerer Quan Chi.
Chapter 2, Batman. Batman takes the Flash back to the Batcave, and Batman asks why the hell he was so mad, and the Flash doesn't even know. Then he gets pissed off again, and Scorpion switches places with him. Scorpion thinks Batman is Sub-Zero for some reason, then they fight. Batman doesn't know what's going on, so he calls Wonder Woman, telling her what's happening. Then another weird energy frequency pops up in Gotham. He meets the Joker, and they fight. After defeating him, Liu Kang shows up out of nowhere, and Batman offers him help. Unfortunately, Liu Kang is tripping real bad, thinks that Batman is Shing Tsung. Liu Kang looks dead as shit, and Batman realizes Joker and Scorpion escaped, and he's pissed with Liu Kang. He calls Green Lantern, asking to be transported so he can put Liu Kang in jail. Batman and Green Lantern talk, and they're worried about another invasion happening. They get a Liu Kang blood sample and find no matches to other aliens they have blood samples from. A big lightning bolt comes in and fucks up a lot of their shit, and Raiden appears. Raiden keeps repeating that Batman needs to free Liu Kang, and Batman just wants answers, so they fight. Raiden takes a little sneaky stroll to Liu Kang and teleports him out of there. Batman says it's much worse than he expected. A TV asks where Superman is. Batman. His parents were killed in front of him, so he wants to get rid of crime in Gotham City. He dedicated himself to getting real smart and strong and fights crime. I mean, in the design department, he looks iconic as always and pretty cool. I know I've said before in this video I'm not the biggest superhero guy ever, which is true, but if I have to pick one superhero that's probably my favorite, it would be Batman. That's largely, be that's largely because I love the Arkham series of games and grew up with them. Anyway, his first move in the game is Batarang, Leaping Shadow Kick, which is self-explanatory, Leg Takedown, which someone else in this game has, but I can't remember who, Sneaky Batarang, which goes behind them immediately, Dark Absorption, which I didn't land because Liu Kang wouldn't fall for it, but I imagine it's a parry, Smoke Escape, where Batman drops a smoke gun and lands on top of your opponent, and finally, Smoke Capsule, where Batman essentially drops a bomb on the opponent. He has a lot of moves, which I appreciate, but I didn't get very far. Honestly, I'm just getting fatigued by the game at this point. Concerned that other worlds might once again invade Earth, Batman created an autonomous global security system to monitor any temporal breaches. His system, OMAC, Outer World Monitor and Auto Containment, is designed to detect and trap invaders from alternate universes. OMAC has already discovered a breach in Metropolis. Chapter 3, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman sees where the rift is that's blending the worlds together, and she tells Shang Tsung to fuck off, but he doesn't like that answer, so they fight. Shang Tsung goes back into the jungle, and they think they're merging with another planet. They need Superman, so Wonder Woman goes to Metropolis to find him. Katana appears out of nowhere. Katana is losing her shit, and she's scared because she feels that Shao Kahn is back. Wonder Woman calls in a med unit. She tries to help, and Katana is not trusting her, and Katana gets rage and says that Wonder Woman is an assassin of Outworld. Katana looks dead, but she isn't, and she starts crawling away towards the portal and gets up, walking all weirdly, and Batman calls Wonder Woman and says that Superman isn't there and that the Fortress of Solitude has been breached. She gets there and sees Superman frozen, and Sub-Zero is not sure what's going on, and they fight. After the fight, Wonder Woman locks up Sub-Zero and frees Superman. Once he's freed, he says his power feels weird, so he went to the Fortress to see what's wrong. They're worried their planet is merging with Apocalypse. Wonder Woman asks Sub-Zero who's behind the invasion, and he says that the DC people are the invaders. Green Lantern needs help, so Wonder Woman brings Sub-Zero and sees Captain Marvel losing his shit. After defeating him, Captain Marvel is getting fucked by the rage, so Wonder Woman asks why he attacked Green Lantern, and Captain Marvel doesn't know. Wonder Woman. She's the daughter of a queen and comes from Greek mythology. She left a female-only island to go to man's world. She uses her unbreakable lasso to get the truth out of people. Her design is just average Wonder Woman, very patriotic and iconic. Her moves are Wondrous Spin, which looks kind of funny, Divine Princess, which pops your opponent into the air, Splits Grab, which is self-explanatory, and Stand Burst, where you grab your opponent and slam them onto the ground, Lasso Grab, where you put the enemy in a lasso and swing them side to side and then hit them, and Gotcha Girl, where you lasso them into the air and slam them onto the ground. Her moves are cool, but really nothing stands out too much for me. She feels like a pretty middle-of-the-road character. Returning to Themyscira, Wonder Woman learned that strange relics had been found scattered across the island. A sword, a shield, and a golden amulet, all pulsing with energy. Compelled to equip herself with the items, she was infused with powers beyond those bestowed upon her by the Greek gods. She and her Amazons are now unstoppable as they fight for the preservation of Earth. As I'm writing this, I am fucking furious. So basically, I did the rest of this video in one sitting, and during that one sitting, I fucking forgot to press the goddamn record button. My ass is not putting myself through going back, so while my words are my own, and I did play the rest of the game, I promise you that, the rest of the video is just kind of going to be empty. Uh, so it's going to be like a podcast, I guess. Chapter 4, Green Lantern. 
Green Lantern is transported to his homeworld. They tell him that two worlds are colliding. Catwoman and Lex Luthor show up saying that they escaped on Invader's base and were trying to get to Earth, but it malfunctioned. Lex Luthor gets pissed and says the Green Lantern lacks imagination and Lex Luthor needs the ring. After this happens, Green Lantern's little goblin friends tell him he's wasting time and they need to work together to stop the invasion. Neither universe will survive, so they need to work together to stop it. They all go to Metropolis and Green Lantern has to leave them there. He flies away and Lex and Catwoman talk. Lex decides to try to make the situation to their advantage. Green Lantern calls Wonder Woman, but she doesn't answer and Jack shows up to fight. After fighting, Jax looks dead as shit and Sonya walks up with rage and they fight. Sonya is laying there looking dead and Captain Marvel comes and says he won't attack Green Lantern. He says that the energy of the invasion happening is making them full of rage. Captain Marvel has to go to the Rock of Eternity to stop this rage. Green Lantern. He was a pilot who got sent to the desert and an alien gave him a ring which is charged by a Green Lantern. He was put into a group called the Green Lantern Corps and he has to protect Earth. His ring can create anything he can think of. Green Lantern is actually one of my more favorable DC superheroes, believe it or not, but I think this is because he was featured in a Carl's Jr. kids meal like 13 years ago or something. His design isn't all that dorky, I think it's pretty cool. I like his moves too. He has Summoned Hand Grab, which grips your enemy and smashes them into the floor. Justice Fist, which is a ranged fist that punches your enemy. Strength of Will summons a giant hammer that smashes your enemy. Judgment Hammer, which summons a hammer and pushes the enemy away. And Wall Barrier, which forms a wall and pushes enemies away. None of his moves will blow you away, but they're fun and unique enough, which is important to creating a necessary and fun character. I really like Green Lantern a lot. Chapter 5, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel arrives at his destination, and Raiden doesn't want him there, and neither does Captain Marvel. Raiden introduces himself and asks why the area exists. Captain Marvel says the gods give him his powers, and that Raiden is corrupting this place, and he's going to make him leave. After Captain Marvel wins, he puts Raiden in a chokehold and punches him to Zimbabwe. Captain Marvel says he needs to stop them, and a wizard head pops up and says he needs to stop Dark Khan. Dark side essence has been fused with Shao Kahn. His essence is what is fucking up everything. If the connection isn't severed, then the rage will destroy everything. Captain Marvel needs to collect as many people as possible to beat this issue. Superman isn't responding to Captain Marvel. Scorpion drags Captain Marvel into the Nether Realm. Shang Tsung wants the power that Captain Marvel has, and Scorpion fights Captain Marvel. Scorpion looks dead, and Shang Tsung says Captain Marvel wins, and he wants Captain Marvel to kill Scorpion, but he doesn't. Shang Tsung says now Captain Marvel has to fight Baraka. After winning, Shang Tsung says that Captain Marvel would have fared well, but he couldn't have been champion because he'd have to fight Shang Tsung. After proving Shang Tsung wrong, Captain Marvel says he's had enough of these games and tells Shang Tsung to send him back. He sends him back. Baraka and Scorpion aren't sure why they can't defeat Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel shows up in Metropolis and the DC villains are standing there all siding with Dark Khan. Superman pulls up and says Lex needs to be in jail. Catwoman says they need to keep their eyes on the prize. Deathstroke says he will gut Joker. Lex blames Superman for his issue because of Superman's laser vision. Captain Marvel explains to Lex what the rage is, and they need to work together. They think he's on Apocalypse, and Lex Luthor says they need to go back to the portal that the Mortal Kombat characters have so they can go to Apocalypse. They decide to all work together. Captain Marvel. Billy Bratson wandered into a cavern, and the wizard named Shazam gave him the ability to turn into Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel has a design that isn't too bad. It's nothing special, but it's alright. His moves are reasonably enjoyable. He has Solomon Escape, which is just a normal teleport. Strength of Hercules, which is just a really powerful lunge punch. He has Atlas Clap, a large clap move that pushes the enemy away, Power of Zeus, which is a projectile move, Achilles Bolt, where Captain Marvel summons a giant fucking lightning bolt, and Mercury Bear Hug, where you give your enemy a big hug and strike them with lightning. In general, I'd say that Captain Marvel is pretty solid. He's fun, and his moves are good. Not much else to say about him. Chapter 6, The Joker. The Joker and Deathstroke show up at a graveyard. Sonya and Kano show up. Joker offers a pretty flower for the pretty lady, and Sonya doesn't want it. They teleport away to the Green Lantern area, and Sonya isn't pleased about it, and Joker and her fight. Once the Joker wins, he's all surprised that he won, and Deathstroke is surprised that Joker won. Kano and Deathstroke fight, and Joker grows some balls and says it's time to fight Kano himself because Deathstroke sucks. After beating Kano and feeling like a badass, Deathstroke is surprised that Joker is so strong. Deathstroke touches Sonya's teleporter, and they go back to the graveyard. Joker turns on Deathstroke to fight him. Joker is having an ego trip, saying he thinks he could even kill Batman. He heads to Gotham City, and Batman stands there waiting to fight. Joker is completely ready to fight Batman. Batman gets scared because Joker is more powerful. Batman is laying there looking dead, of course. Joker is absolutely hyped that he beat Batman. Batman comes up and shocks him, putting him to sleep. Batman calls up Lex Luthor, saying the strike team failed. Batman says that Lex better be on the right side. Joker. He is a real homicidal maniac. He doesn't even have an actual superpower. He's just crazy. Man, the Joker is fucking awesome in this game. He's fun as fuck, and I just love his personality. Not to mention, he has so many moves. He has Laughing Fist, Put It There Pal, Sinister Heels, Bombs Away, Funny Man, Joker's Wild, and Magic Trick, which has four different modifiers. I mean, really, I just fucking love this guy. He's so much fun to play, and he looks awesome, and all of his animations are great. Chapter 7, Lex Luthor. 
Lex calls Catwoman her bodyguard, and Catwoman doesn't like that. He wants the heroes to handle Dark Con for him. Sub-Zero and Scorpion show up, and Lex fights Sub-Zero. After winning, Scorpion shows up and also wants to fight. Scorpion looks dead as hell, and Lex goes to free Catwoman from ice. They leave and go to the Special Forces area with the portal. Lex decides to download the schematics of it, and while he's doing that, Jax shows up ready to fight. Jax looks fucking dead, and the Flash shows up holding Catwoman by the head, and she looks dead. Then the Flash tells Lex to shut the fuck up, and it's time to fight. The Flash looks dead, as always, and all the DC people show up saying they're ready to leave. They all waltz into the portal. They arrive to see they're on a floating island in space, and they say something is wrong. They see the Mortal Kombat characters show up and say it's time to take them out. Lex Luthor. He's super rich and smart. He isn't moral, and he has a big ego, and he hates Superman. He uses his suit to duplicate Superman's abilities, and he wants to get rid of Superman so Lex can be in power. Lex Luthor has a pretty normal design. He feels super tanky, and I kind of like that. He has rocket practice, which is a lock-on rocket attack, powered palms where you just kind of push your enemy a whole bunch, Lex core rocket, which fires a rocket, hot flames, which is a flamethrower, evasive maneuver, which makes you fly backwards with your foot, and rocket boots, where you hit him with your foot. He's a whatever character. Decent. Chapter 8. Superman. They all get fucked up, just like in the Mortal Kombat storyline, and Lex and Superman remain. Lex isn't happy with Superman, so they fight. After the fight, Batman walks up, saying that Superman is getting fucked by the rage, and Batman needs to fight him about it. Batman tries to stop Superman from killing him, and it works. Superman flies off to fight Dark Khan. He meets Dark Khan, but he also meets Raiden, and since they think that they're against each other, they fight. After they're both winded from the fight, and Dark Khan talks to them, they realize they actually are both against him. Dark Khan fucking explodes. The entire Mortal Kombat side has completely disappeared. They are in Darkseid's throne room where Shao Kahn is locked up. They stand there and look at him puzzled, then he flies away trapped inside of the glass. I unlock Darkseid. Superman. He was an infant when he was sent away from his planet, and he arrived in Earth and was found by two people on their Kansas farm, and he goes by Clark Kent, and he's literally invincible and is super strong and can fly. Superman's design is iconic as ever, and he looks cool. Superman has heat vision, inhale capture where he just sucks up the character like Kirby, soaring knockout where he puts his enemy in the air and punches them to the ground, Ground Tremor, which slams the ground, Shoulder Charge, which just charges the enemy with your shoulder, and Up, Up, and Away, which puts you in the air, and then you have modifiers like Laser Eyes that can hit your opponents. He's decent, but really nothing crazy. Pretty alright character. Catwoman. Selina Kyle is a cat burglar and has a love-hate relationship with Batman. She is super athletic. Catwoman's design is as she has always looked, and it's cool, I guess. She has Whip Sting, which is a normal whip, Lasso Grip, which grips your opponent and you kick them away, Kitty Surprise, which isn't very accurately named because you trip your enemy, then stomp their face, Raging Cat, where you jump onto your enemy and hit them a few times, Somersaulting Fever, which pops your enemy into the sky, and Nine Lives, which is an evade. Her moves are just okay. Really a whatever character to me that didn't really need to be here, but it's alright that she is. Deathstroke. Slade Wilson was given enhancements from a military experiment, and his costume makes it clear that he only has one eye. He is an expert manipulator and assassin. Deathstroke looks badass. He also has the same thing where he switches between sword and fist with circle like Baraka. He has flash bomb, pistol shot, stomach stab, and lunging stab. All of his moves are pretty decent, just nothing too special. That's really all I have to say about him. Now that we have all the regular characters out of the way, we'll play the two unlockable ones. Shao Kahn. He's extremely powerful and ruthless. He took over Outworld and wants to take over Earthrealm. Because he lost the Mortal Kombat tournament, he decides to invade anyways. Shao Kahn looks the same as he has forever, which is fine. It's a great design. He has Shoulder Charge, which he always has, Rising Importer, Rising Emperor, Energy Shield, Pulse Blast, which is a projectile, Choke, and Hammer Smash. He plays fine, really. He's just a bonus character, so I didn't expect much, and I also didn't get much. Standard. Dark Side. He's ruthless, rules over Apocalypse, wants to find the anti-life equation, and wants to rule all life in the universe. He's damn near invincible. He looks cool, I guess. Mega Beam, which is just Superman's eyes. He has an anti-air beam, which is the same thing but upwards, Omega Knee, which is simple, Omega Tremor, which is just a ground pound, and Omega Force, which has Darkseid fly in the air and then land on his opponent. Really nothing else special. Well, I guess that's it when it comes to the main game part of this video. Let's take a look at the extras. Oh wait, there aren't any, other than just viewing the bios and endings. So with that, I'll just talk about some aspects of the game. Quick time events. There's a couple of quick time event mechanics that were introduced in this game that consist of flying off of something high and having to press buttons, pushing your enemy through a building and having to press buttons, and grabbing an enemy, having you press buttons. I don't really like this system very much. I don't like the idea that if I get unlucky, my attack can just switch around on me and I get fucked over. It brings you out of the fight a little, and I just don't really like it. Fatalities. The fatalities suck. They couldn't do anything crazy because it's a T game, which kind of makes it lose some of Mortal Kombat's DNA. The maps. The maps are just fine. General gameplay feel. The game honestly feels solid. It doesn't feel extremely different from the previous games, but the animations and feel do make it clear that it is the PS3 now, not the PS2 or PS1 or arcades. I'm just going to conclude it here. 
The Conquest story isn't horrible, but it doesn't serve too much of a purpose, and it feels far too short. The game doesn't have enough content to warrant a full-priced game on launch. This isn't a fully-fledged Mortal Kombat game. It feels like Mortal Kombat kind of lost itself here. Anyways, with that, I'm giving the game a 5 out of 10. It's fine. I hope you enjoyed watching. This year, I'm going to try to do videos every other week on this channel, and the weeks where I don't have a new video, I'm going to try to post on my second channel. I'm trying to listen to the top 10 best-selling... I'm trying to listen to the top 10 best-selling albums of every single year from 1960 to 2024 and making it a series, so if you're interested, there's a link in the description to that channel. The first video should come out next week. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.